Hey guys, it's Libby, and today I'm going to be doing a review of The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton. This is a debut historical fiction novel which Jesse Burton was inspired to write uh, when she saw one of these. Not sure how well you can see that, but it is a miniature um, house um, called a cabinet's house, um, which were popular um, sort of oje d'art in 17th century uh, Amsterdam. So this is set in Amsterdam in the 17th century. Uh, it's in the later 17th century, the like 1680s. Um, so it's after the tulip bust, which I feel like is what Golden Age Amsterdam is mainly known for. That was back in like the 1630s, I think. And I picked this up because I have recently moved to Amsterdam. Actually, not that recently now. It's been like five months. And I live in the old part of Amsterdam in Centrum, um, which is obviously the part that was around in the 17th century. Um, and so there's this map um, of Amsterdam at the time this book is taking place and I have found my house and where my husband works and the street that we walk down all the time, Calverstraat, which features quite heavily in this book. So um, this book is very enjoyable from that perspective. Our main character is a girl in her late teens. Her name is Petronella Ortman, um, but she has recently been married to a much older man that she hasn't really met before. Um, his name is Johannes Brandt, so she's now uh, Nella Brandt. And she leaves her small town of Asendelf to come to the big hub of Amsterdam um, to live in her husband's house. Uh, she doesn't actually see that much of her husband while she's there, um, but she spends a lot of time with his sister Marin and the servants um, Cornelia and Otto, who had been a black slave but was freed by Johannes. The miniaturist of the title gets involved in the picture when Johannes buys Nella a um, cabinet house, which is an exact model of their house, and Petronella commissions some things from a miniaturist, who's a person who makes very tiny things, um, to fill the house with. And she starts with fairly mundane objects, but the miniaturist also starts to send her objects and miniatures of people that she hasn't asked for and which reveal um, an amount of knowledge of the households that Petronella isn't sure anyone else should have. Katie from Books and Things actually also recently read this book and I was over in London last weekend um, and so I met up with her to talk books and have tea and we agreed that although the miniaturist plot is um, the most sort of easy to explain in a synopsis style, that's not really what the book is about. I would categorize this as a coming-of-age novel where Nella is entering the adult world and sort of seeing all of the secrets that adults can have um, and just sort of trying to figure out who are these people that she's living with now. As they're definitely keeping some secrets from her. If you like a house full of secrets sort of story, you will like this book. And then the miniaturist plot is just something we dip back in and visit um, occasionally. Now, looking at this as a work of historical fiction, I am not totally ignorant about what life was like in the 17th century Netherlands, but I'm definitely no expert. So to the extent that I know things, um, I felt like this was historically accurate and well-researched, um, but I'm certainly not the authority on that. But I think the miniaturist succeeded in doing something that a lot of historical novels try to do and fall far short of, and that is to express a feminist message and show how people in the time were feminist. A lot of times when you read a feminist character in a historical book, it does feel like that. It doesn't feel like there is a feminist context or message to the book. It feels like this character is feminist and the feminist character is just anachronistic. That pulls me both out of the story and out of the argument or out of the social commentary. But I think Jesse Burton has done a really good job of showing that there were historically accurate ways that women could um, assert themselves and decide to live the sort of life that um, gave them dignity. But she's realistic about the ways in which it was hard and the ways in which you had to give up um, other things that you might want. It also has a very interesting pro-family message. I know pro-family is a term that has kind of been um, absorbed into like modern, particularly American conservatism, um, but I'm using it in the sense of like actually being in favor of actual families. 
I know that for the last 100 or 200 years, we've sort of been thinking of the family as the nuclear family, um, with like parents and their children, and like aunts and uncles and grandparents are maybe sort of relevant to the situation, but not particularly. But before that, the concept of a family was much more nebulous and um, it could be a whole combination of things. So here at the start of the book, we have a man living with his wife and his sister and their two servants who do feel quite a lot like part of the family, even if they do do the cooking and cleaning, um, that you don't really have that um, 19th century sort of sense of separation between um, servants and the family or the household. And then by the end of the book we end up with a very different family structure. Which even though nowadays we probably wouldn't legally identify as a family, um, there is a lot of love between all of the members. And this is not a very romantic book, but there is a lot of non-romantic love, which is really nice to read about. So I gave The Miniaturist five out of five stars. I highly recommend it. Let me know if you have read it and we can talk about more spoilery things because there are a lot of things that I did not talk about. Thanks very much for watching guys. I'll see you later.